The controversy of induced abortion uh, as a component of maternal health is, is uh, a controversy that spans nations. It's a controversy that takes place at the United Nations. How do you allocate funding uh, for MDGs, which are the Millennium Development Goals, and what is the, the knowledge base that, that funding decisions are made on? So one of the most controversial subjects has been the effect of abortion laws on maternal health, particularly where abortion is prohibited in order to safeguard women's health, motherhood, and unborn human life. During the last three decades, numerous international agencies, public health actors, politicians, and several research groups have claimed that countries which restrict or prohibit elective abortion promote what they call unsafe abortions. Now, hypothetically, this results in a higher risk of complications, and hypothetically then leads to higher maternal mortality and morbidity. But there is no direct scientific evidence of any potentially deleterious cause and effect relationship between abortion restrictive laws and maternal health. This fact that there is no relationship between restricting abortion and worsening maternal health is critically important for health policy in developing countries where elective abortion is prohibited because the threat of potentially increasing maternal mortality is used to pressure liberalization of abortion policies. Chile offered a unique opportunity to contrast the hypothesis that the legal status of abortion was related to maternal health through what is called a natural experiment. And this study was possible due to several interventions in education, public health, and legislation implemented during the last century. It turns out that the records from Chile are excellent. So as public health interventions were made, the effects of those public health interventions could be documented. Um, what we have is a number of different interventions that happened between 1900 and 2010, including mandatory elementary school education. There we go. Authorization of therapeutic abortion. This is when abortion was made legal. Uh, the implementation of the mother-child law, which was prenatal control and complementary, uh, excuse me, prenatal, uh, prenatal uh, services and complementary nutrition program. The introduction of antibiotics, which is critically important, as you know, worldwide. Um, the introduction of oxytocin, which was helpful for reduction of uh, uh, maternal mortality from uh, obstructive labor as well as postpartum hemorrhage. Um, the extension of the mother-child law with a plan family planning component in 1963, eight years of elementary and middle school education, and then in 1989, the ban on abortion, uh, followed up with increases in mandatory school education. So this period of time within the red box is what was studied, and you'll see in the next few graphics. The results of this study were published in a landmark uh, paper by Dr. Koch and Dr. Thorpe, who's also a couple of founder and colleagues. Uh, and this was uh, published just um, not very long ago. 2000, May of last year, thank you. Women's education level maternal health facilities, abortion legis legislation, and maternal deaths. Uh, I'm just going to read this. The conclusions of this independently peer-reviewed article have been referenced in five, peer uh, five independently peer-reviewed articles and covered by eight printed news media, 33 online news portals, and 35 original blog entries. That's important because, as uh, a friend of mine who publishes says, most papers are read by three people. That is, the people that write them, the people that review them, and the people that publish them. So this was a uh, very, very important um, paper that came out. What they showed was uh, the trend of maternal mortality in Chile from 1957 to 2007 has been one of continuous progress, okay? And continuous progress that's, that's very well documented from data that's uh, very accurate data. They showed that the maternal and abortion mortality trend in Chile from 1979 to 2009, um, both were decreasing. So both the maternal mortality and also the abortion-related mortality decreased during that time period. Now, as you remember, 1989 is when abortion was banned in Chile. So this period of time prior to 1989 represents the time when abortion was legal. 
And what it shows is maternal mortality and abortion-related mortality were both decreasing, but banning abortion did not cause a subsequent increase in abortion-related mortality and did not cause a subsequent increase in maternal mortality. That was the hypothesis that is used to pressure nations into legalizing abortion. One of the more important things that were uh, uh, discovered in this paper and written about in this paper was the synergistic effect of education on other factors that affect maternal mortality. So for example, for every year of education, you saw a reduction, 39.7% reduction in maternal mortality. Um, skilled birth attendance at delivery resulted in 12.5%. Uh, 12.5 uh, points. Points of reduction. OK, thank you. From 100,000. Per 100,000, thank you. And if you added on to that, and you, and you showed, uh, you, you controlled for women's educational level, as women were more educated, you got an increased reduction in maternal mortality. Similarly for clean water, um, simple public health interventions that we sort of take for granted, but the availability of sanitation uh, also affects maternal mortality and again, if you control it also for educational effect, you see that education increases the effect of these other public health interventions. And again, for sanitation. But there is a paradox here, and that is for women who are 30 or more years of age, you, and they're giving birth for the first time, you have an increase in maternal mortality. And that is also increased by education. So there is a an educational um, paradox. It helps women to access the educational system, but also the delay in childbirth results in uh, increasing complications that come from delaying pregnancy. So the conclusions of the Chilean natural experiment, the main factor determining the progress in maternal health in Chile is the educational level of women. Other factors include complementary nutrition programs, universal access to maternal, prenatal, perinatal, and postnatal health services, the development of emergency obstetrical units and specialized care for complex high-risk cases, and sanitary developments such as access to clean water and sewer. These are all things that have been known, and this uh, particular paper shows that indeed in Chile these things do result directly in decreased maternal mortality. Education synergistically affects other factors, such as access and efficient utilization of available maternal health services, increasing women's autonomy, modifying reproductive behavior, and reducing fertility. The reduction in fertility has a paradoxical effect on maternal health by excessively delaying motherhood. And the final and most important conclusion is that the improvement in maternal health is unaffected by making abortion illegal. That is, the downward trend in maternal mortality was not detrimentally affected by making abortion illegal. Um, now we'll shift to another paper that uh, the Moise Institute has, uh, has published, another two papers. Um, and that is looking at the actual estimation of abortion figures, because this kind of statistical manipulation is used to um, make uh, illegal abortion seem to be a huge problem, which is then solved by making abortion legal. So, we'll give you a little background on epidemiology. In general, there are three major types of recognized epidemiological methods which can be employed to estimate abortion figures. One is studies based on prospective records of elective abortions. Abortions are registered when the abortion procedure has been completed in a hospital or an abortion facility, so these would be registry-based. But it depends on the quality and integrity of the registry. And in general, it usually underestimates the figure if there's significant underreporting. There's also a type of study based on self-reported abortions. The abortion figures are calculated from surveying selected informants, leading to over- or underestimation depending on which population you select. So for example, if women of fertile age are directly surveyed, then it usually leads to an underestimation because women are, uh, are, um, are less likely to report that they've had an abortion because of the social stigma attached. So there's a third type of study that you can do, and that is studies based on an indirect epidemiological standardization. Abortion figures are estimated in a population that does not have official registries, or that has incomplete or low quality registries, by obtaining a plausible measure if that population, which you want to study, 
follows the behavior of a standard population with a registry of high quality. So if you have two socially similar cultural groups, and one has a very high reliability uh, measure, and that the other has a low reliability measure, you can use the high reliability measure of the similar population group to estimate the uh, incidence in a lower reliability group. In most Latin American countries, abortion is restricted by law. Therefore, estimating abortion figures can only be used, but can only be achieved using surveys, which is one way, or through epidemiological standardization. Reports published for Latin American countries by researchers of the Alan Guttmacher Institute estimate abortion figures that are inconsistent with the continuous decrease in maternal mortality shown by these countries. So the methodology employed by Alan Guttmacher to estimate abortion figures requires a re-examination in order to understand this apparent paradox. And these are the two papers that were published by the Melissa Institute. The overestimation of induced abortion in Colombia and other Latin American countries and methodological flaws on abortion estimates for Latin America. The authors reply to Singh and Van Cole are the authors from the Alan Guttmacher Institute. Okay. What they found was that there, not surprisingly, uh, you, the methodology used by Alan Guttmacher Institute significantly overestimated the abortion figures of uh, uh, different countries. Um, in methodology, I'll, I'll come back to that slide, but what I want to do is come to the conclusions here. The methodology employed by the researchers of the Alan Guttmacher Institute is based on one or two subjective opinion surveys over a limited number of health workers and subjects deemed knowledgeable on abortion. And these health workers, who they surveyed, were selected in a non-randomized fashion. So this methodology is, of course, highly susceptible to selection and recall bias. Using an indirect epidemiological standardization employed in the Spain, employing the Spain population as the standard, there was an up to 40-fold overestimation of abortion figures in the Latin American countries. And this is important to understand because these numbers by the Alan Guttmacher Institute represent the numbers that are presented to countries to demonstrate that they have a problem with unsafe abortion. And, uh, so this slide looks at the comparison in these studies. These are the uh, estimated induced abortions uh, in different studies, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Guatemala, Mexico, Peru, and the Dominican Republic. Uh, when you use the Ellen Guttmacher, selectively ask these four health workers, how many abortions do you think are done? Versus using the epidemiological standardization method, comparing with the population of Spain, um, uh, which is the method employed in uh, the Melissa paper by Dr. Koch and colleagues. And this uh, red box here is the overestimation of the Ellen Guttmacher Institute numbers for these countries. Mexico offered the unique possibility to evaluate with another natural experiment the estimation methods of abortion figures before and after abortion decriminalization in the Federal District of Mexico, which we know as Mexico City. Um, this way, figures of induced abortion and abortion-related mortality can be contrasted with official figures after decriminalization of abortion in April of 2007. In addition, the interpretation of certain codes of the ICD were evaluated when employed for estimating the level of progress in maternal health in Mexico City. And that resulted in another paper which was again published just recently an uh, incredibly important paper looking at how you classify um, abortion-related mortality. So this, this slide demonstrates the trend of maternal mortality in both Mexico and Chile from 1957 to 2010. Chile is the blue and Mexico is the green line. Okay, and as you can see, there's a continuous smooth uh, d decrease in maternal mortality in both countries. Um, this is a busy slide looking at the overestimation of abortion figures and, and abortion-related mortality in Mexico. This is from 1990 to 2010. And what you see over the more important slide, uh, uh, or the more important portion of this slide is over here, where it looks at the percent overestimation um, that was made uh, per year in number of abortions. And again, 
the, the key is that uh, there was an estimation of live births, which is the denominator, and there was an actual count of live births. And if you, if you don't get the denominator right, you don't get the maternal mortality right. So the way the over, one of the ways the overestimation was done is by projecting number of live births rather than a number of live births measured. It's, it's kind of inexplicable why you wouldn't use the measured number um, if you wanted accurate results. Um, so interestingly, this is the current profile of maternal mortality in Mexico and Chile okay, to, from 2009. In Mexico, you find uh, the largest contribution to maternal mortality is hypertension and eclampsia, followed by hemorrhage. Um, indirect causes is a lump sum, so though it looks bigger. These are the specific uh, uh, identified causes. Um, Abortion-related mortality is 3%. Okay. Uh, in Chile, it's very similar. Hypertension and eclampsia uh, account for about a fourth. And uh, sepsis, again, is the next biggest cause in Chile. Uh, these are, are lumped together causes, but look at abortion, 2.3%. So unsafe abortion is not a major uh, causal factor of maternal mortality in either country, although that was the, the uh, justification for legalization of abortion in Mexico in, in, the, uh, in 2007. So the conclusions from this study is when you compare abortion figures estimated by researchers at the Alan Guttenmacher Institute, uh, for uh, Mexico City in 2009, and official abortion figures reported by a non-governmental agency, there's a tenfold overestimation. Such overestimation is a result of employing subjective opinion surveys. Researchers from IPAS Mexico overestimated abortion-related mortality mainly because they employed projected, which is fictitious figures of live births, instead of the official actual figures, which are readily available. An imprecise determination of some codes of the ICD to calculate rates of abortion-related mortality was also one of the factors. Uh, such interpretation led uh, researchers to include deaths unrelated to induced illegal abortion. For example, they included deaths from ectopic pregnancy and miscarriages as uh, abortion-related mortality, but with the implication that all abortion-related mortality was then caused by uh, unsafe induced abortion. And and uh, that's dishonest, basically. The bottom line is that's dishonest. Okay. So the study, in the conclusions, they proposed new codes to the ICD in order to more accurately be able to track what exactly is abortion-related mortality and to sort out induced abortion-related mortality from other types of abortion, spontaneous abortion, um, that that are uh, most that are many times lumped together as abortion-related mortality. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you to hold all questions till the end with uh, Dr. Koch and Dr. Rosina. Thank you. Could you come up next?